Hi, my name is Anissi Roman, and this is my story on my gritty teenager. I'm a teacher, I'm an educator, and I work with special needs children. I'm a special ed teacher, and I worked all the time with special needs children, um, all types. And when I got the diagnosis of my daughter, it was just like I've heard it, this, this uh, about Tourette's, or she was diagnosed with Tourette's, like I heard it for the first time. And as a parent, at the time, I think there's two things, two ways that a parent can take those kind of um, diagnosis when you get it, when your child gets a diagnosis, um, avoidance and acceptance. And as a parent, you have to go through a little avoidance, a little denial period. And it wasn't until Olivia went came to my husband and I, after a while, we're just kind of like feeling it out as parents, how to deal with it emotionally and how to help her. And she just came up to us one day and said, when are you going to get over it? I, this is going to be me. This is, it's not going away. Tourette's is not going away. And it was then that my husband and I looked at each other like, oh my gosh, like, she's right. Like, <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> and it was then that Looking back now, once we accepted it and accepted that this is part of our lives, all of our lives, and it's changing, you know, the dynamics of our family, and it obviously changed everything. Once we accepted it, it just, everything fell into place. Okay, my mindset once I accepted it, once I said, okay, we're, we're in parent mode, we gotta, we gotta do this. One of the things that I specifically... Um, did for Libby is we did a lot of role play. She was six years old and she would, didn't want to go on the school bus. She didn't want to go to school. She didn't know what was happening to her body with all the motor tics and um, involuntary movements. And so it was really hard. And um, so I would drive in her, you know, and drive her to school a little late. And then it got to a point where, like, I, I, I have to take control of this. So Role play for us was huge. So every day before she went on the school bus, I would teach her how to say, um, if she saw someone giving her a look or a stare, I mean, at that age, it was just more the looks. Um, and we would practice and I would have her, you know, repeat what I said. If someone gives you a look, you tell them I have Tourette's and we just practice that every day, in and out, in and out, every day. And, um, and then as she got older, it was more challenging questions, um, you know, and we would role play. I would be like pretending I was a kid on the bus and the questions got more difficult. The stares, my comments got more difficult. And then I would, you know, show her what to say and how to say it. And I think that gave her more, um, more grit, more confidence in just standing up and accepting who she was. I think once, like I said before, and I know I'm repeating myself, but once we accepted it, then she felt more comfortable in her own skin because it was just an overall like, okay, this is, this is what it is and we're just going to move forward there for her, um, listening to her, comforting her. Um, it's acceptance is just, um, I, I just put my running shoes on and I just, I ran. <laughs> Take the time to listen to your kids. Not just hear them, but really listen to what they're saying. Because it's, we can perceive what they're going through or have an idea, the challenges, but not until you really sit down and put yourself in their shoes and how they walk in their shoes for a whole day. Um, especially like in school and with the social um, pressure. Not until I really allowed myself um, to do that is when I really was able to help her. And so if I had any advice, I would say really just sit down and get to know what they're feeling on a daily basis in all aspects.